Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Well, this week saw the government launch the eagerly anticipated National Retrofitting Scheme. An incredibly ambitious scheme which aims to deliver retrofitting to 1.5 million properties over the next 30 years and is supported by an initial 8 billion euro investment by government to 2030. This scheme will see employment grow from 4,000 to 25,000 people. Joining me now to discuss the business opportunities which the scheme could deliver is Dr. Kieran Byrne, the Director of National Retrofit with SEAI. Kieran, this week marked a significant milestone with the launch of the government's National Retrofitting Scheme. You might start the interview by taking us through some of the key objectives of the scheme itself. Uh, good morning, Carl, and thanks for having me on. I'm delighted to be on with you. Um, the ultimate objective of the National Home Energy Scheme is to retrofit 500,000 homes uh, to a B or B2 rating by 2030. And the reason for that is that we want to reduce, significantly reduce the amount of energy that the homes are consuming and also on the other side, the amount of greenhouse gases those homes are emitting. If your listeners have a look on the website and find the Climate Action Plan for 2021, we'll see that the uh, we want to reduce the emissions of greenhouse ga- gases from... 7 to 8 um, kilotons of carbon dioxide down to 3.5 to 4. So there's half the emissions coming from the, uh, the built environment, the domestic housing stock. So there's a significant target there. I welcome the ambition of this scheme, I have to say, and I think it represents a fantastic opportunity over the coming years for contractors right across the country. What are your estimations in terms of the type of business opportunities that will be created as a result of this scheme? Yeah, well, we think they're significant. Um, just put it in, in this kind of context. The SEAI have been in business for about 20 years and we've been doing retrofits all the way along. So we have a very good and long-established relationship with contractors. But what we launched yesterday was a new one-stop shop scheme. So it's we're completely changing the nature of the grants. We're commoditizing the grants for homeowners to make it easy. And that's going to support us in our, in our ambition to scale up. So the opportunity for contractors, just put kind of some numbers on it for contractors. We have 8 billion in this sector between now and the end of the decade. Of course, it sounds like a long time away, but it's only eight years. But in the first couple of years of the program, we have 1.4 billion euros to invest in it between now and 2025. In terms of the government have provided that level of grant and support for us to be able to deliver retrofits to, to, to homeowners uh, up and down the country. So it's a huge opportunity for contractors to have a look at the retrofitting industry. One of the other key features of this particular scheme is that it's nationwide, it's rural and it's urban. Many of our listeners this morning that are working in the construction industry are getting into a van at six in the morning and driving to Dublin for work and getting back at seven or eight in the evening. This opportunity is locally based, isn't it? That is right, and thanks for raising that point because it's absolutely true, but it's also near and dear to my own heart. Yeah, you exactly described. Many contractors get up in very early in the morning to get to Dublin, Cork, all with the main centres. Retrofitting involves every home and every community right up and down the country. So someone who gets into this industry now can have a very satisfying uh, career in the retrofitting industry and work pretty much our entire career in the southeast without having to travel these extended distances to main urban centres for, for their work on a daily basis. As you say, some people, well, I wouldn't say many people like to commute, but you know, some people can do it. But it is draining. So we've actually had a lot of interest already from companies who are looking at this, going, you know what, um, this could be interesting for them because they're having difficulty getting workers. People are just not really in the mood to, to keep this kind of long-term commuting thing coming up. And having this kind of a sustainable industry that they can add value and grow and develop into it in their own area is really, really, um, it's really an opportunity for them. And Karen, there's a number of different opportunities from the one-stop shop provider to those that are specialist contractors across a number of different areas. Provide us with an insight into those. Yeah, listen, if I can draw, kind of maybe do it and kind of t- I think about two paths for your listeners. Path number one is what we're calling the one-stop shop. So the um, the homeowner does the entire retrofit journey in one go. So they go from whatever their BER rating is up to a BER, B2 rating. And normally what happens in that journey, Carl, is that you start looking, you tackle the fabric first of the, of the home. So you make the home kind of uh, pretty well insulated, improve the insulation and the air tightness and the ventilation. And once you get the fabric up to a certain spec, you put in the renewables. So you put on things like a heat pump, which are incentive advising in the scheme and also you'd look at maybe solar PV. So that's one pathway. The other pathway is not every homeowner for various reasons and a lot of them to do with costs um, is able to do the whole journey in one step. So we have a second path where they can do the individual pieces as and when they are able to do them. And the pieces are various types of insulation. You've got kind of external wall insulation, cavity insulation. You've got things like the insulation of windows uh, on the one-stop shop scheme. You've got the insulation of heat pumps, you know, solar water, heating solar electricity. So there's a number of different trades that can benefit
benefit from this retrofitting program. Some companies have all of the trades under one uh, roof, so to speak, and some of the one-stop shops and some of the other companies actually, uh, they coalesce and they work together. So they, you might have insulation companies working with electricians and things like that to kind of work together to get the jobs done. So there's quite a range of opportunities across the building discipline there. So, Kieran, what is the registration process and what does it entail? Yeah, the registration process at the moment is we've opened up on the FCAI website and it is there's a couple of steps to it, if you want. Uh, the first step is, is a pre-eligibility criteria. So in other words, there's a, it's on the website there and there's a couple of steps to see is the company actually at the right scale and size at the moment, right? So we want to try and filter out. Now, this, by the way, Carl, it's not about keeping companies out, but we're starting off the scheme. You want to go with the big guys first, get them in, get them registered. And we want the big guys typically have the scale and the capability of dealing with the scale that we want, right? But what we want to do ultimately, get them in the pre uh eligibility criteria. They then have to go and fill out a formal application plan, uh, form, um, and develop a strategic plan. And once we're in agreement with that, uh, we have a, an appointment agreement and they become qualified. So once they're qualified as a one-stop shop, they can operate in any of the SEI schemes, the, the can-pay schemes. So not all companies will be there in the first instance. Our job what we want to do is not to exclude people. We want people to be able to grow into that space. You will have in your listenership some smaller contractors that are sitting there thinking, mm, how do I grow my business? What do I do? Well, they might meet the bar that we're setting for the very first day, but we can certainly work with contractors, try and build them up on the schemes, get some experience into the area, and be able to ultimately get them up to the level of a one-stop shop. Some existing retrofit contractors may be very close to the market, might be able to scale up to get there. Some, some other contractors might be coming new into the retrofit industry. And for any ambitious contractors that are listening to this morning's show, what can you say to them in terms of how SEAI will be able to support them in building their capacity and capability if they do want to become a one-stop shop? Think about this, so we have a very significant target to achieve in terms of the 500,000 B2s. One element of that target card is getting the homeowners in terms of the hit the green button, as I call it, and, and apply and start looking to get their homes retrofitted. Very, very close to the homeowner is the contractor, and it's in our interest to try and develop and build and work with contractors. So we have a very extensive series of programs. We do an awful lot of contractor training workshops. We do various types of workshops in terms of particular types of technologies, particular types of techniques, uh, you know, in terms of um, upskilling contractors. Another point is well as the SEI have been working closely with the education training boards, the ETBs and that's to kind of help uh, get more staff into the sector and help train um, either reskill or upskill um uh, existing people or sorry, upskill existing people or reskill new people to come into the centre and there's there's a number of ETBs education training boards that are specialising in this retrofit area um, and Waterford Wexford ETB is actually one of them so what in terms of the south east uh, what we've, we've already done actually is we've linked existing contractors in with the ETB so they can start getting their own staff trained in the various disciplines of retrofit so we're quite active in that space And for any contractor that's tuned in that says I want to take part in this I see an opportunity in it. It's a long term one, but my staff don't have the skills. What skills will they need to acquire and where are yeah. they going to be able to get them? Well, that's, that's, a, that's good. And just first at the very start, it's, that's a key point that you mentioned. It is, a, to me, it is a long-term opportunity. So we have policy and clarity and really good line of sight on the funding right out to the end of the decade. So it's a good time for contractors to animate and say, you know what, it's not today or tomorrow. It's a very long-term opportunity. And of course, just a key point there is once we get to the 500,000 target, as we were discussing earlier on, um, that's not the end of it. We've two-thirds of the homes yet to do. In terms of the ETBs, we have five ETBs. So we have them. They're basically uh, geographically based around the country. So you've got Wexford, Waterford, Leash Offaly, uh, you've got uh, Cork, uh, Limnick, Clare, Mayo, Sligo, Leitrim. So really, the way they're ge- geographically um, displaced around the country is that they're, they're not too far from any contractor. An interesting point as well of a retrofit, it's not a singular industry in the sense that there's multiple parts to it. So you can actually come in at a relatively lower skill base, and we've seen a number of contractors do this, where they might only uh, specialise in a single measure or something like that, and they build up their competence and capabilities in other measures. So you can actually grow that way as well. So some contractors in our current schemes would have started off as single measure contractors and gradually built their business up into multiple measures. And also of course the route then is uh, we were starting to see some of it at the moment is aggregation amongst contractors where you've got one company is skilled in one area and another in a different area and they can mutually be beneficial to each other. I think it's quite natural as well that there'll be some acquisitions within this space over the coming years. 
Yeah, I, I'd imagine so. I, I, I think, I mean, of course, when you see an opportunity like this, what, what we're really trying to do is we, we've had a, we have a very nice um, retrofitting industry and some really, really good uh, long-term um, players in the market. But look, the scale and ambition that we've launched and the government have launched uh, just last week has been really unprecedented across Europe. And the, but the clarity of, the, of the, the policy direction, so we have a climate action plan out to 2030, NDP and all this European stuff as well, but also the clarity on the money. So to be able to say to contractors, look, we've 8 billion out to the end of the decade and guaranteed 1.5 1.4 billion in the next two or three years that's a significant amount of money there and it really gives them the certainty they need and that will drive some I would think you will start seeing again more of these kind of either joint ventures or either the acquisitions and things like that and people building up more of the suite of skills um, to do multiple measures Yeah and as you say Kieran, this is a 30 year opportunity 1.5 million properties half a million each decade in that regard so it really will see people out I was just doing the math. Not only will we see people out now, they'll probably see their kids out as well. I think more and more people. Like, well, <laughs> it's interesting as well on uh, this opportunity is it, it, we just discussed earlier in the interview. It is very rural based, in order you don't have to be migrate to the big cities. But what's also interesting and a, a good point is what we're doing. Apart from making people's homes warmer, which is very important and more comfortable, uh, we're actually having a significant benefit on the environment. So a lot of people actually want to do the right thing. You know, we're talking about all this environmental change and all the rest, and say, well, what people have to say, well, well, what can I do? Actually, by getting involved in retrofit, every time you retrofit a home, you decrease the amount of energy it consumes in the first place, and you're reducing the amount of uh, greenhouse gas emissions on the other side. So it's a very noble and worthy cause, apart from everything else. Of course it is. And for those homeowners that will be engaging in deep retrofitting, I presume they'll be dealing with those one-stop shop providers. Can you provide us with an insight into the type of organisations they are going to be? Because I do believe you're going to be starting off at about 20 of these. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just, just again for your listeners, in a, in a weird kind of way, it's if any of the listeners have ever had a, an extension done, typically what they would have done at Carlos, they've got a builder in and the builder, they agree a price and what they're going to do and the builder does the extension. What the homeowner doesn't really know is that the builder might have some staff on his books or he might bring in various contractors in different parts of that build. The one-stop shop is exactly the same. They'll do a start-to-finish service for the homeowner, hassle-free, take all of the, uh, the, the, the pain points away for them. So at the moment we have a number, for example, we've got super Homes, SSE, House to Home, REIL, Envirobeat. These are some of the bigger companies. They're backed up by many of the big utilities. So they're big players in the market at the moment and they're likely to be the ones that will be first registered in our OSS contractors. But as we discussed earlier, we will have a smaller number to start, but our job is to grow the number of contractors. And we've actually experienced this. We've did this before in our solar PV scheme a number of years ago. When we launched a scheme, and similar to the way we launched this scheme, we had about 13 or 14 solar PV installers in the country. We now have over 130. So people have looked at it and said, hey, you know, there's grants there, there's a market there, there's demand there, and they've got into that marketplace. And that's exactly what's going to happen in this space as well. There's existing contractors, there's huge grants, there's going to be huge demand, and a lot of people will get in, and a lot of people will scale up that are already in. Something that often holds contractors back from engaging in schemes like this are bureaucracy. Is this something that's going to cause a problem for them? No, we don't believe so. And this is something we've done from the very outset in terms of designing the scheme. So we've looked, as they say, from the outside in because think about this, we're, we're all the time looking at the back end of the target we have to deliver and how do you deliver that target? Well, number one is we've t- we've commoditized the grants, so it's very clear for the homeowner, it's also very clear for the contractor in terms of what's available, what the grant is. We're streamlining the process it's going to be online and offset online. Grants are going to be practically automatic and one of the, the issues was when you're registered in a one-stop shop we're changing the model there so there's quite a stringent registration process but that means that the one-stop shops once they're in they've effectively qualified and they have a greater kind of um, ability to deliver homes will be done on an individual home contract uh, home basis so one-stop shops can, come, can claim on, a, on an individual home basis on previous schemes you would have had to aggregate and wait until all homes are completed and things like that so we're looking at all the pain points for a contractor and for a homeowner and trying to iron out those as much as possible in this current scheme there are currently 615 domestic BER assessors registered with SEAI, but with a target of 1.5 million properties to be retrofitted over the next 30 years, with up to 75,000 properties completed per year, surely the number of BER assessors will need to multiply over the coming years? 
Yeah, that's part of the climate action plan again and part of our targets because I always liken this kind of water flowing into a small harbour. You can't just live one boat on the left-hand side of the harbour, you have to lift them all. So on the one side, a kind of couple of parts of the market, we have to generate the demand for the homeowner. Ultimately, the homeowner gets the, the, the contractor will come in and supply and sort out that demand. Second only then is the BUR assessors who have to come in and can do all the various BUR assessors, um, um, three and post BUR works for various schemes. And that number has was actually historically an awful lot higher. It paired back a bit and we're in the process now of training and increasing the, the number of BUR assessors to again, like the, like the boats in the harbour, to reflect that they need to increase to satisfy the increase in demand. So we're, we're very... Um well, we're very positive we believe that we'd be, we'd be able to do that in terms of the VR sector. And uh, another piece which will help in, a, I suppose, in that perspective is one of the grant measures that we're um, launching there, there last week is a home energy assessment. Um, which is a, a very specific technical assessment of your individual home. So it's a good step further than a BER. So a BER looks at your home energy performance. The technical assessment is an awful lot more detailed than that. We believe a lot of the borough sessions will actually be involved in doing those home energy assessments as well. So it's kind of a, a career development piece for that group of people as well. Kieran, I'm going to leave the final word to yourself this morning to make a pitch to the contractors listening across the southeast about why they should consider becoming contractors involved in the rollout of this national retrofitting scheme. Well, th- thanks very much for that, Carl, and I appreciate that. Look, I think the opportunity is, is, is there. It, it's, it's unprecedented in scale and ambition. And, and I think we can't be faulted for that because we really have to do the right thing for the environment. And this is what it's ultimately about. Um, I think there's a great opportunity to uh, tap into the market, to have a satisfying, rewarding career that can happen in your rural area and your t- local towns in the southeast, um, and to add value to your own current business if you want to scale up, but also to consider maybe moving into that retrofit space because because we see it as such a long-term stable opportunity that it may provide a counterbalance to some of the more cyclical opportunities involved in building at the moment. So a lot of construction companies are looking across and well, maybe Retrofit might be that kind of steady, steady as she goes type uh, business line as opposed to some of the more cyclical ones. So I'd encourage people to jump onto the SCI website, have a look at the registration criteria, happily in, uh, contact us, or even engage in some existing contractors and to see how they're doing and get a better understanding from them. Because I think it is a huge Huge opportunity for everybody involved. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Dr. Kieran Byrne, Director of National Retrofit with SEAI, and I'd like to thank Kieran for highlighting the significant opportunities which will arise for contractors in the Southeast. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast.